All right, joining us now on the Franchise Hotline, head coach of the OCU Stars, Mark Barakoff. Coach, I got to tell you, you have a lot of faith in your guys because we have always preached a thing called the Dylan and Todd bump where a lot of teams have success after coming on with us, but we have not been batting very well recently. So thank you for being with us. Oh, wonderful. That's great news to hear, fellas. I, I like that. <laughs> I, I, I've got confidence then. <laughs> well, you guys are going into the conference tournament coming off a big win. Tell us about the big win uh, in the regular season you guys had last Saturday against USAO. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we had a, a, a Thursday we, we played at Texas Wesleyan and, and won at a place that's been very tough for OCU to win at. And then we followed that up going to USAO and, and was were able to play a really good game on their senior day, and which is always tough to do. And, and we played really well and, and came back, a big comeback at the end and won. So we've been playing really good of late. So I'm, I'm really happy how things are going at the moment. That's what I was going to ask. You guys are 3-0 and in your last three, which – as you get to this point in the year where you're in conference tournaments and you're trying to make a run here, what have you liked most about what your, what your team's brought to the table over the last three? Well, I mean, from the start to the finish this year, you know, it takes a while as a new coach to try to get your system in place. And you kind of always hope that things start putting it together towards the end of the season. And we really have, um, you know, we've, we've been just offensively, the ball movement is really good. Um, guys right now don't really care who's the one scoring. They're just looking for the best, uh, the best option, the, the, the open guy. Um, they've really bought into that, and um, they've bought into you know the underdog role. We were we were picked to finish eighth in the conference at the start of the year, and um, you know we're not getting much help from the national uh, people with the rating committees. Uh, we won 15 games and arguably one of the top conferences in America. And we've kind of used that as our – we're kind of the underdog, and we've got to win games, and, and hopefully people will start noticing us. But um, the, the guys who just bought into the system and the belief and the love of the university. You guys play Central Christian at 5 o'clock inside A. Blimmons Arena, and it's the quarterfinals, I believe, of the Sooner Athletic Conference men's basketball tournament out there. What, does, what kind of a, a big fight does Central Christian present you guys this weekend? Well – they, they went on the road to Texas Wesleyan and won, so they're they're playing really well. Uh, they're well coached. They run a lot of stuff. Um, they've got a uh, third team all conference guard that is very good, and they played us tight at our place um, the last time we played. So we've got to be able to um, execute. And on the defensive end, like I said, they run a lot of stuff. And um, we've got to really dig in defensively and uh, and, and stop their uh, all the sets that they run. That's going to be the key. Well, it's interesting too because I mean, you guys you guys haven't lost to them this year. Is it is it just brutally tough to beat a team three times in one year? Well, that's always a fear. <laughs> you know, it wouldn't <laughs> have mattered who we would have played because we swept Texas Wesleyan and we and we beat Central twice. So it was that thought of we're going to play somebody that we're going to have to beat three times. And, and that's a difficult thing. I think the only really advantage we have is we played central in the second time earlier on after the break. So it's, it's been, there's been a gap like Texas Wesleyan. We, we played just a week or so ago. Um, yeah, it's tough to do. Um, you're familiar with teams. This league is very well scouted. Um, but you know, at, at this time of the year, everybody's going to be good and it just takes 40 minutes to beat somebody. You know, it doesn't matter what the record is anymore. 40 minutes of, of one special night and you move on. So our guys are ready for that. We've talked about that. Um, and, and we're re ready to go I mean, with all this, the storms and things getting pushed back. Uh, they're now ready to go. <laughs> they're fine. They're, they're wanting to play really badly. Mark Barakoff, head coach of OCU men's basketball is our guest coach. I, as a kid, my birthday's March the 16th, and every year it seemed to fall during the NAI National Championships. And my dad would drop me off in the morning, come pick me up for lunch, and then come give me at like 11.30 when the games were on. I'd sit there all day and watch basketball. And there's a lot of basketball, obviously, around here. You've got the Thunder. You've got D1, D2 schools, good high school basketball. NAI basketball is still a very good product. Speak, if you will, about what you've seen in NAI basketball, and especially in your conference, as you mentioned, which is one of the best in the country. Yeah, I, you know, uh, I think because there's so much going on, I think sometimes NAI basketball gets overlooked a little bit. 
But the talent that is in the Sooner Athletic League, um, I mean, Mac, you won a national title a couple of years ago. USAO's top 10 in the country. OCU has maybe the richest history in NEI ever. Um, the league has so many good players. Um, I always find it funny when kids always say, well, I'm not going to go NEIA. I'm, I'm, I'm a D2 player. I, I, I don't want to play NEI basketball. Well, NEI basketball is, is basically D1 and D2 transfers that have bounced back to this level. The, the Sooner Athletic is full of D1 and D2 players. And uh, I think if you threw one of you know, our, our teams in a D2 conference, we'd be very competitive. Um, it, it's high-level basketball. I, I coached at the Division One level before. And um, in terms of the talent, you know, there's not a lot of difference. I mean, maybe we don't have 12 D1 players, but there's D1 players on the floor and I think a lot of people um, overlook the NEI level. Um, it's as talented as anything that I've been around, and the quality of basketball is good. The quality of coaching is good. The fan bases are good. Um, so, I mean, I can't speak highly enough of it. I, I have found this year to be as, as enjoyable of a year I've ever had coaching. When you talk about D1 talent, I'm sure you're kind of alluding to Rashawn Coleman, right? You're all first team uh, Sooner Athletic Conference uh, honoree this year, 16 points per game, almost five boards, three assists. What makes him so special? Sean is a uh, he's a fighter. Uh, he has no quit. I mean, he's not the biggest guy. He's not usually, I mean, he might be one of the smaller guys on the floor. Um, but he has such a drive um, to want to be successful and to want to want to change the culture of our program. Um, I, I think if you look at his numbers, I think he plays 38 minutes a game, which is unheard of. It's hard to get him off the floor. He rebounds the ball. He hits big-time shots, defends, and he never gets tired. Um, I mean, he's been bloodied with bloody nose. He's had stitches put in, and, and he fights to get back on the floor. Um, yeah, he's another one of those kids, you know, played junior college basketball and might have been overlooked. And he finally put it together this senior year. Um, I think he's like 30 points away from scoring 1,000 at OCU. Nice. Um, so he's, he's been great. I mean, he, he's a pleasure to coach. He's, he's incredibly coachable, and he just wants to get better every day. That, that's hard to find these days. Last one for me, Coach. You know, three of the last five games you guys have played, both teams, and I know a couple were overtime, but both teams have scored in triple digits. Uh, you guys look like a team that like to get up and down the floor and shoot the ball quite a bit. There's been kind of a debate going on here in the state of Oklahoma and nationally in a bunch of states about a shot clock at the high school level. We've asked a bunch of college coaches, is coaches, men's and women's about this. Where do you stand on a high school shot clock? Well, first off, I'm from Southern California, and I I grew up with the shot clock. Right. Yeah, they were um, one of the few states to have it. Yeah. Yeah. As, as a college coach, to go watch a high school game when you're going to see a recruit, the shot clock, if Oklahoma doesn't get a shot clock, it, it's very difficult to go watch high school basketball games. Um, I can't tell you. I'm sure other coaches have had stories. I have stories where we've gone to watch a recruit, and at halftime, a team has held the ball, and you can't even see what the recruit can do. And that's that's not any, that's not so. I mean, I think we drove two and a half hours to watch a kid, and the other team held the ball uh, half the quarter. Um, shot clock. We need a shot clock in the state of Oklahoma to get the kids ready to, for the next level. Um, I, I think it'll make coaches coach even more. Uh, there's even more strategy involved with the shot clock. Um, I'm a big proponent of we need a shot clock, and I hopefully it happens soon here in the state of Oklahoma. Same. Totally agree. Coach, best of luck. 5 o'clock Saturday inside Abe Lemons Arena, Central Christian. Uh, OCU is looking for the sweep again, I guess you could say, for a third time this year <laughs> to beat Central Christian. Best of luck, Coach. Appreciate the time. Thanks for having me, guys. You bet. Mark Farikoff joining us here on 107.7 The Franchise, head coach of the OCU Stars. Look, I, I can tell you, I've been to a bunch of games, UCO. I've been to OCU before. It's a great time. Go enjoy yourself. In fact, That's a cool arena, too. It's a great the arena. The Women's Arena is a great little arena. It I've is. called some state high school basketball games there before. I uh, The last time I was there, there was a guy by the name of Gary Inglet who played at uh, at OCU. was awesome. Did a really cool story on him. So It's been a little bit since I've been there, but uh, it's, it's definitely a great atmosphere to take in a game.